Hi, so welcome. Um, in this video, I want to talk about something that is not connected to Wall Street. And I just want to talk about the general ESL industry. Some of, some of my viewers may be aware that David Kedwards had one of my videos removed. And that was a little bit uh, frustrating, I guess, because that, <clears throat> that video had a lot of comments. It had nearly 360, 380 views when it was taken down. But yeah, I guess because he hadn't consented to the phone call, I assume that was like how he was able to, to do that. But anyway, now in this video, I, I want to talk about how COVID-19 has affected ESL in China. And you can read newspaper articles about this. You can read online articles about this. You can read magazine articles about this, but I just wanted to like share about my personal experience because when it comes to Chinese ESL, like I'm not really an expert in any sense, except for the fact that like I've experienced what I've experienced. I'm not going to pretend that I have been to other cities and researched other cities and I don't have a lot of contacts in other cities, but I'm familiar with what I have gone through and I'm familiar with what my close friends have gone through and, and some of the stories that they've told me. And um, so that's what I want to share with you right now. So I guess the number one uh, impact of COVID was the fact that people couldn't come back into China very easily. Uh, I had a Canadian friend, um, he might not be, no, he's fine, he's not going to mind. I won't, I won't say his name, but, but he came back. Uh, I've got a Ukrainian friend who came back. But generally, coming into China now, uh, unless you have an existing visa, and one of the guys, this Ukrainian friend, he had a family, uh, he has a family in China, he has a, a child and a wife, and he was able to come back, but it was very, very difficult for him to come back. My Canadian friend, his visa was still valid, his work visa was still valid, and he was able to come back because it was valid. But some other people who have had valid visas, uh, not personal friends of mine, but just what I've read about online, apparently have not been able to, to come back. So. Yeah, so that's been a big one. So there has been a shortage of ESL teachers within China. They haven't been able to meet the demand and to recruit from outside of China like normal. So that's been one of the big changes. Now, has that led to an increase in salary and increase in wages? In my personal experience, it hasn't. Like it hasn't led to an increase in salary but it has led to an increase in the amount of work available. So yeah, that's been my experience. I mean, other people may have other experiences, but, but that's, that's been my experience. Another big impact on COVID has been the speed up of online learning. So at the, at the beginning of COVID teaching online, people were doing it like it was happening, but it was nothing that I would have considered doing. Um, I didn't know how to do it. I thought it was second rate. And now there's like all of these platforms and all of these companies that are offering online learning and they've grown uh, exponentially. And obviously very recently, there's been like a big hit on, on, onto, that, onto that business model because they were using teachers that were based outside of China and that's been stopped now. But, but yeah, the, the definite, like, for me, one of the biggest things that COVID has done, it's kind of brought online learning into the mainstream. Like it's not something that I think I would have considered doing um, before, before COVID-19, but now I'm getting, I'm getting set up for it. <clears throat> so that's been a, that's been a big one. And uh, as far as I'm aware, uh, there's all of these different projects. So for example, there's a, a project that I'm going to be a part of that a, a lot of people will be a part of, but it's got the endorsement of all the big people. And that is offering classes online to public schools in like various provincial cities and, and, and even, even towns, what, what the Chinese call towns, but what I would call small cities. And, um, it's very exciting. So as much as people talk about how there are restrictions on English and English is being de-emphasized. There's also like these exciting projects that, that are based on, on online 
And uh, yeah, it's quite interesting actually, because if you think about it, like these smaller cities that are going to be uh, having these English classes, they are cities that foreigners might have trouble living in or they wouldn't want to live there because they're too small. So it's quite interesting to, to think about the fact that English education in China in government schools is actually expanding. It's not, it's not, it's not decreasing, even though, even though there's, there's issues around that. Um, COVID-19, another impact has been like private, private teaching. So there's been less willingness. And I used to see it a lot. I used to see it a lot. I used to see foreigners in coffee shops, in Starbucks and other coffee shops having classes with Chinese people. I just don't see that much anymore. I, I don't see it. I don't see it. Um, I used to often see like someone there with a laptop and people just, people just aren't interested in, in, in necessarily meeting in public, uh, as much as they were. And, uh, I, I can't speak about Beijing or Shanghai or, 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 or Guangdong or Shenzhen, but, but certainly where I live, um, you just don't see it anymore. And uh, the people that I used to teach in this way, um, they're just not interested. They'd prefer to have classes in their office where it's more discreet. And that might be because I'm a foreigner. I mean, who knows? Like, I just don't know, but it just seems to be that like, that coffee shop style of, ESL private class is just really out of fashion. And I think it's it's probably because of, you know, like mask wearing and people are, people are concerned about the virus and, and so on. Obviously another big impact on, uh, on ESL in China has been the closure of a lot of these big companies. So you've had Wall Street, you've had like so many smaller schools. My friend lost his school. Um, there's been like, all of these closures, center closures. Um, yeah, so that's been a big one as well. Like a lot of the in-center, so it's sort of moved from in-center to online. That's been that's been one of the big ones. Now, how <clears throat> how am I feeling? How are my friends feeling? I'm, I'm always optimistic. <laughs> so I'm optimistic. I'm excited about online. I'm excited about it. And I actually think it's gonna be pretty cool the way that it is now. I remember trying to do online before with like Cisco and these other programs and it was really just appalling and it was so difficult, but but I'm really excited about online, online learning now. And uh, a lot of my friends are as well. And I think everybody just accepts that you can get hours with online, you can get big hours with online. And it's just like from the comfort of your own home. It's still really warm here in China, but in the future, like in the next couple of months, um, it's going to start to get colder and then winter's coming. So being able to like have a coffee on my, maybe that's out of shot, but being able to have a coffee or a cup of tea on my big, beautiful table and to teach a class in the home and to get paid for that, it's, uh, it's pretty enticing. It's pretty exciting. So I'm optimistic. I think there's still like a lot of demand in China for education, for ESL education. Like it's still a huge, a huge industry, a huge market. And, um, and yeah, so for those people who are in China, if I have viewers who are in China and they're thinking about leaving or they're thinking about, um, getting out of the country <clears throat> for, for whatever personal reason, or, or they are pessimistic about the ESL market, I would say, don't be pessimistic, be optimistic. It's, uh, it's a really great time um, for ESL in China. If you're a foreigner in China, if you're living in China, it's a great, it's a great time to be here. And um, yeah, that's how I'm feeling. So I think COVID-19 also like some of the political stuff, like surrounding some of the countries, like I'm an Australian, so I'm not exactly um, flavor of the month, but I guess, you know, I'm not really affected by it because I've got a work visa but some people who have been renewing their visas, changing their visas, uh, there has been talk about political atmosphere. The political atmosphere is not good for some countries like America or, or Australia or Canada or, or, or I guess the United Kingdom as well, to a lesser extent. Um, so yeah, there's that, there's that as well. That's another result of COVID. Um, <clears throat> vaccinations, although I haven't heard of any friends who haven't been vaccinated having any like consequences about that with, in terms of their ESL work. Uh, it, I, I don't feel like China is really um, pressuring anyone to have a vaccine. 
I wanted to be like a good little boy and get my vaccine um, as soon as possible. And there might be some vaccine people, anti-vaccine people watching this. They have a right to their opinion, but, but I guess I just um, had a really uh, kind of excited attitude about the vaccines. I was like, it's my medicine. But, um, but yeah, for some of my colleagues who are not, or, or other ESL teachers who are not vaccinated, I haven't heard of any, I haven't heard of any consequences where they've been denied entry to a place or, or they've lost work because they haven't been vaccinated or anything like that. So I wouldn't consider that to be really an issue. And yeah, I'll, I'll end the video there. I don't think COVID-19 has had um, a bigger impact than some other events that have happened in the past. For example, um, I think SARS probably had a much bigger impact, uh, according to my friends. Like that was like panic, you know, for that, even though it happened for a short time. I think COVID-19, even though it's been bigger in terms of uh, it, it's it's longer impact and more people have have obviously have obviously passed away and there's been the vaccines and all this kind of stuff. Like in China, at least, like. It's just been like a lot calmer and it's been it's been it's been fairly fairly calm in terms of like how it's impacted ESL. So yeah. I'm optimistic and uh, you should be too. <laughs> okay, thank you. Bye bye.